Kid folk, how are you today? Listen, I just recently did a video called Three Steps to Better Bible Reading. If you haven't seen it, you can watch the, the, the earlier one. I got some feedback on it and some people were saying, hey, look, can you make three videos, for a, one for observation, one for interpretation, and one for application, and just focus on observation and then focus on interpretation and then focus on application so i've done that this video is all about observation what does the text say and we're gonna go get into it and i hope this helps you let's go all right ken folk we are dealing with observation and this is where you're gonna spend the bulk of your time when you are reading a particular passage. And you're gonna ask some questions and, and these are just some questions to ask as you're reading the passage. And you wanna get an easy to read translation. Uh, I use the English Standard Version of the Bible, other versions of the Bible that are easy to read. Do not use the King James Version of the Bible when you are reading. And so you're gonna ask some, some, some questions and observation is about answering questions that directly come from the text. So to kind of keep your attention, this is a, a, a tip to kind of keep you engaged in your reading. Um, when you read the Bible, you wanna ask questions like, who, who, who is the author, who is the speaker, who is the audience, who is it about, is it, is it, who is the writer? Is this about God? Who is the audience? Is it Jews, Christians, Gentiles, etc.? Is it the church? It, 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 who is it about? Is it about the church or the world or and, well, some particular individual, David, Isaiah? Who is it about? You also want to ask what? What is the text talking about? You want to ask these questions because these questions not only give you a sense of what the text is talking about, they also keep your attention and keep you focused. And so you also you want to ask questions like when? Is it the past, the present, the future, when you believe? He was, things of that nature. You want to ask who, what, when? You also want to ask where? Is it the temple? Is it in Ephesus? Are, are we in Israel? And are, are we in another country? Where are we? Uh, are we in the heavenly places? That's a place. How? We want to ask how. Then we want to ask why. And so these who, cool, what, when, where, and why questions are things you want to ask every time you look at a text. And uh, you don't want to just rush to the, the second step of the interpretation the application. Because a lot of the good stuff to have good interpretations of what does the text mean, you got to know what the text says. So you're going to spend a lot of time here. So, for example, look at this face. We're going to use this face as an illustration of how to observe. So, looking at his face, what do you see? You see ruby cheeks. You see black eyes, brown eyes. You see a ring in his eyes. You see salt and pepper, gray hair. You see, looks like a gold chain. And you see, like, observing the Bible and reading the Bible is like observing a face. You, you can't just look at it and then look away. You got to look at it. And the more that you look at it, the more that you can tell about the person. And, and you know, the more that you can tell about the text that you're reading. And so if I look to, if I just look at it, look at him and then look away, I don't see the texture in his face. I don't see the lines in his face. And, and I don't get enough information for me to make an interpretation of all the observations. And so I, I look, I look, I look, and I write down what I see. And it's the same thing with the text. And I'm going to show you the Bible. I have a marking system that I use. This text is about when the people of Israel are delivered from, uh, by God and they are placed in, in front of Mount Sinai. And there's some things that I've marked here and I use different color codings and you don't have to use my system. But this system helps me key in and figure out what is relevant and important in this particular text. So for instance, Exodus 19, you see, on the third new moon, 
I've marked that with brown. So I mark times or, or, or wins. I mark that with brown so that when I come back to this, uh, when, I, when I'm reading this text, and I come back to it and I want to understand when this happened. I can look back at the brown and say, okay, when is the third new moon? Well, every moon is roughly a month, so it's been 90 days after the people of Israel had gone out of the land of Egypt. So then moving on, I use yellow for anything that I think stands out to me. It doesn't really matter what it is. I use yellow for repeated words. Um, and and I'm, I use, and you don't have to use a digital Bible, but I do because this syncs with all my other Bibles. And so when I'm, when I'm reading, I, I have some consistency. And so then I, I use red for everything God or the Lord or Jesus actually does. And so here I mark the Lord called to him out of the mountain. And I mark, mark how he tells Moses, how I bore you on eagle's wings and I brought you to myself. And then uh, going on, I mark everything that is about people obeying what the Lord has said. I marked that in blue. And I got this from a, a former professor of mine, and it's been so helpful as far as color coding and, and, and understanding what I'm reading. And here I've marked, if you indeed, as you can see, obey my voice and keep my covenant. And so I go on to continue to uh, mark this whole passage uh, and the passage is 19 1 through 25 I also mark verse 18 as you can see I've marked it in orange and when I mark things in orange I'm marking God and his glory visible manifestations of a big beautiful God and his glory and I marked that in orange so here you see now Mount Sinai was wrapped in smoke because the Lord had descended on it in fire the smoke of it went up like the smoke of a kiln and the whole mountain trembled greatly. And so here I've marked that in orange. And so asking who, what, where, and why of the text, uh, and also marking those critical questions, critical things in my text have helped me to observe what I need to observe so that when I'm finished with my observations and I know what I am looking at and then I've looked up all the things that I've marked because sometimes I mark things so that I can go do some further study. Once I finish my observation, then I'm ready to go into the next phase, which is part of the next video, which is interpretation. Thank you. For